Hi, I am Jason Williams coming to you from Cold Spring Harbor Laboratory and in this section of the course I'm going to talk to you about interactive analyses. So what is interactive? Well, the way that most applications in the discovery environment work, you probably come to us for two reasons. One uh, is we provide an alternative to using the command line because most bioinformatics applications uh, work at the command line. And also, maybe you want to multiply the computational resources that you have because maybe what you have is more limited what cybers can provide. So we actually go ahead and take those computational resources, take that command line interface, and we throw uh, the discovery environment wrapper around it so that you as the user get the benefit of not having to use a command line application uh, that might be a little bit outside of what you're normally used to using and also you have a, a bit more computational power behind that. That's what we call a non-interactive analysis. So you go from launching an application to a few minutes later getting a folder with your results. In the interim, there's really nothing you can do except wait. You can't adjust those results. You can't visualize what's going on. You can't see what's happening. But what if you wanted to see and adjust intermediate steps in analysis? Uh, you wanted to play with parameters. Maybe there's some component of it that uh, is very visual. Or what if you have an application that you want to use and that application already has its own interface? You don't need the discovery environment interface. And what if the focus of your analysis is visualization and you want to make that easy for you, for your collaborators, for your students? Well, that's what uh, these VICE applications enable. VICE, which is going to stand for the Visual Interactive Computing Environment, um, it looks like, and it starts actually in the discovery environment, it's embedded in the discovery environment, but when you launch one of those applications, you could use things like JupyterLab, uh, RStudio, RShiny, the Linux command, uh, command line. And so that really provides you a richer complement of things that you're able to do. Uh, you can interactively manipulate analyses and visualize data. You can run some popular applications, as I just mentioned, Jupyter, RStudio, RShiny, Linux. Basically, anything that's an open source tool that has its own interface, um, those are things that are potentially integratable as one of these applications. Um, if you are familiar with Docker, uh, that's a little bit advanced, I won't be going into that too deep, but essentially everything within the discovery environment operates as one of those containers, and so uh, that's the easiest way to bring it to the discovery environment and integrate it. Uh, some of the advantages of ICE is that there's no restriction on data limits. It's a secure environment that you can actually uh, even customize. Uh, it's got longer run times than some similar products. There are free services online that allow you to run a Jupyter application, um, but many of those are a bit more ephemeral. This really allows you to run something uh, for a long time. We have 40 hour run times by default. It's highly scalable and also like everything we try to make it easy for you to be able to share these applications and analyses. Some reminders, uh, this service is available and the U.S. installation of Cybers uh, Discovery Environment, you do require authorization to use it. So you're going to need to go to user.cybers.org and request uh, under services that you have the VICE uh, service added to what you're allowed to use. Be sure you are specific about your intended use case. We want to know that the person using uh, this is uh, using it legitimately uh, because we do, I mean, there's always the potential for abuse anytime uh, you're offering free compute over the web. Uh, one other way to enhance your uh, probability of being approved is to make sure that your account is associated with an ORC ID uh, so we know it's for legitimate research purposes. The other thing is that either at the time that you launch the VICE application or afterwards, you're probably going to have to deal with data transfers because the VICE applications run in this sort of uh, walled garden and you need to move data that you want to analyze into the VICE application when you launch it or if it's later on, uh, some different uh, tools that you can use explain in documentation to move that. So uh, I'm going to take you now through an exercise. And in this exercise, what we're going to do is complete the analysis that we started earlier in the course by launching an RStudio session to create and visualize a phylogenetic tree. OK, so I am already logged in to the Cyber's Discovery environment. Uh, the first thing that I am told to do in the instructions is create a folder where I'm going to save my output. Uh, so let me go ahead and search for the tutorial folder that I have previously created. And it's searching, and I see this is the one that I'm looking for. 
and the instructions say that I should create a folder called rocker output. So I'm going to go ahead and add a new folder and call it rocker underscore output. Okay. And the next thing that I need to do is uh, open the application. Now there's a link uh, to the application that you're supposed to use in the instructions, but I'm just going to go ahead and search for it. So I can click on apps. And if I recall, it's going to be actually one of the favorited apps, or you could have searched for it up there. But since it's right in front of my face, I'll go ahead and use that Rocker R Studio latest. Okay. Uh, I can just call this a demo in my comments, and I'm going to choose the output folder to be um, the folder that I just created. So that's going to be back in my home Williams, and that's going to be actually in the tutorial folder. And I'm going to choose that rocker output, so I'm going to check box, select that, and say OK. Click Next. Okay, so the next thing is to choose my inputs, and in this case, I'm going to choose the muscle alignment that we've done previously that's also available within my tutorial folder. Uh, since my input is going to be a folder, I'm just going to go ahead and browse and bring in the whole thing, and that's my muscle in, uh, output that's previously created, so I'll check and select that. Uh, I'm not going to input anything else, so I'm just going to go ahead and click on Next. Okay, so at this point, you have the option of being able to uh, choose, uh, you know, the different numbers of CPUs, the memory, disk space. Um, obviously, there's some reasonable defaults here, and in cases where you do need more than what's provided, you can always contact cyber support because it is possible um, that there are applications and configurations that give you more. Um, but in our case, um, we're just going to go ahead and leave the defaults and skip this step, so I'm going to click Next. And at this point, I can go ahead and say launch analysis, and it's going to go ahead and launch. Okay. All right. So I get uh, sort of this um, view of what I've just done. If I want to see the status of things, I can go back here to the analyses menu where I go again and I'll see my history. And, um, and when I, we're launching one of these uh, interactive VICE applications, uh, the first thing is going to really stay in the submitted uh, and perhaps for just a few minutes and you need to refresh or you'll get a notification. So I just got a notification. It appears up here too, that that is now running. Uh, so depending on how much data you're bringing into the system, you may need to wait longer. Uh, but since ours is running, I'm going to go ahead and click that little link out icon. And it's going to take me to a window where there's going to be apparently some more loading. But again, that's all really dependent upon the amount of time uh, that it takes for uh, thing, data to transfer, usually that's the limiting factor. So it really all depends on um, how much data you are bringing in. Okay, so here we are in the environment. I'm just going to go ahead and zoom in a little bit. And the purpose of this point is not at all to teach you R, so I'm just going to assume that you have a little bit of R knowledge. I just really want to show you how you can move seamlessly between the Cyberverse environment and doing something in our studio. So at this point, I'm going to copy and paste a couple commands for the sake of time uh, directly from the instructions that are provided. So I'm going to install a library called Ape. And uh, this is just a tool for doing some file genetics, but again, it's a visual thing. It's going to generate something I can see. Uh, the next thing is I'm going to go ahead and again, I'm just copying and pasting at least these commands because of their length. Um, in your work directory, which is going to be automatically created for you when you uh, start this, if I go to work and I go to data and then input, uh, there is the muscle input folder that was brought in. So this path should correspond to that. Um, and if I go back, oops, I forgot. I should go ahead and load the library. See how quickly things can get away from you. So let's load that library and now go ahead and do the read.fasta, which is a function of that ape library. Uh, I've read it in. I'm going to go ahead and do a distance matrix. Again, not teaching R or file genetics, uh, but these are just an example, a really quick one, uh, what one might do. I'm going to go ahead and plot that. I'm going to get a plot on the right-hand side. It's not the most beautiful. There are probably some things I might want to 
uh, adjust here. But let's say that that was our work and we want to save it. Now, the trick of R is I can literally go ahead and export it and save it uh, to my computer. But let's assume that there's this and whatever other data sets I wanted to save. Well, um, I could go back to that directory and use the write tree function to write it back uh, to my work directory. Let's go to uh, files and work uh, back in data and then in output this time. I'm going to go ahead and write that there. The point being that um, this is a place that uh, R knows about, so to speak, and Cybers as well, and that's where you're going to look for to save uh, things that are in that output uh, once we terminate this app. Another thing that you could do is you could save it if you go back, if you saw this work directory and you saw home, uh, this is a direct link to the Cybers data store. So if I go to home and my username, whatever your username is, I could do a lot of scrolling and then eventually I would find the tutorial folder and I would find the rocker output and I would be able to write it. Uh, so this gives you just sort of an idea that you can write this into uh, different places and have it come out and really make sure that the data is where you want. So it's going to be saved there. And that's uh, sort of uh, already knows what the app, uh, the app output folder is that you selected earlier. So either way, you're going to have things in a place where you know you have them. So at this point, it's uh, fairly safe to go ahead and terminate this. So I'm going to go ahead to back to the discovery environment. And uh, it's already check selected. So I'm going to go to more, more actions and say terminate. It's going to warn me that you know this is uh, this is it. Uh, if you do this, you won't be able to get back that environment, but the data will be safe. So go go ahead and click on terminate, and it's already got a link then to the output folder. And then in that output folder is the tree that I wrote. Uh, in this case, I mean it's a um, not a rendered file since I guess I didn't save the plot, but I saved the actual what's called a new string, which is just a plain text string. But I could have saved the plot as well. So there you have it, uh, fairly simple, that you're able to go ahead and easily launch uh, something like an RStudio or a Jupyter Session or whatever of those interactive apps, uh, move data back and forth between the Cyverse data store seamlessly, uh, and that's about it. So uh, we were able to go ahead and launch that RStudio session and create a file genetic tree using an interactive application. Basically, anything that you can think of using R, R Studio, Jupyter, all of those great things, uh, essentially that is all possible with Vice using uh, those interactive analyses. Thanks.